Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today, I would like to talk about being asked for references. Is it a breach of trust to give out client names and numbers as references? Kristen, kick us off. I nip that one in the butt right away. Every client has a confidentiality piece in the contracts we have. And I don't share anything without talking to them first. They can refer me to another client Mm -hmm. And I won't even tell them that that client's hired me because I have a confidentiality issue with it. Mm -hmm. I have asked clients if they will write up referrals or do that. And I'm happy about that. But as far as me ever exercising it on my own, never 100% don't do it. I kind of looked at the question. I said, I think there's an etiquette involved if you want to ask for a reference. But, um, you know, as far as a breach of confidence, just to go ahead and give the name without saying something up front to the people, I think, is where I would go. I guess a question, though, I would have, uh, and it's interesting, Kristen, what you said, because let's say you have a website, and on the website you list some of your clients. Is that an automatic opportunity for a prospective individual who wants to talk to them to say, ah, here's one of their clients, let me call them directly? Does that, you know, I'm curious how that provides, uh, you know, does that provide the cover for that stuff? Mm. I only list them on my website if they've already given me written permission. And I don't okay. list individuals on my website at all. Only, mm. only the corporate name. Like my website might say, <laughs> I've worked with Johnson and Johnson executives, but that's it. And I, you know, believe me, I am of the mindset that just pure etiquette that you do not give out information to anyone without, you know, the person who you're using as a reference saying, yes, it's okay. I never, I don't even do it then. I don't give out, really? my, mm -mm. Interesting. even if they give permission, I don't do it. It's a breach of trust. Brian, what about you? What are your thoughts on it? Well, <clears throat> this area for the legal profession is governed by rules of ethics. Mm. <clears throat> so it's a little bit different, um, but similar in some ways. Um, we, we look at, you know, for example, there are these rating agencies. You may have heard of Chambers or Legal 500. These are the top two rating agencies and they'll, they'll contact law firms and ask them to make a submission. And they ask for what they call referees, which I think is a strange thing to refer to it as, but it basically is your clients that would have something to say about you, good or bad, uh, hopefully mm -hmm. good. And then what you do is before you give information about those clients, who they are, and it's in writing that you have to do this, you have to seek and get permission in writing from the client in order to do that. So that's, that's one area where it comes up a lot. Another area is, is last night, for example, I was asked to put together some promotional materials for our website in trade secret litigation. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of, one of my co-partners on, on the project basically said, you know, look, can you list the cases that you've worked on in the past? And we're gonna use that to promote our trade secret litigation practice. And so I listed publicly filed and publicly recorded case names with the client names. So somebody could deduce from that where they see that I successfully represented ABC company, for example, that ABC company would have a good opinion of me and they could contact ABC company about Brian Cousin and how he did in that litigation. Mm -hmm. But that, I think that is completely appropriate to be able to list public record litigation cases that are publicly filed that anybody could look up on the internet without necessarily getting uh, the company's specific permission to list that case. So yeah, I, think I, that I agree with you that, that there's a, a difference, a divide there. If it's already public knowledge, <laughs> right. then that's different. Obviously, in my case, none of my clients are ever going to be public knowledge. That's not a thing. So right. that would not be a thing for me. Right. And when I do federal work or state government work, it is publicly noted that I'm the contractor it's all, it's all public knowledge. So yes, I guess in those, but I still, because what they share with me could still be confidential. So I just don't worry about it. I'm just, and I have 50% of my clients who nobody would want to know they were my, they would not want anybody to know I was their coach. Right. And I was so very careful that I don't slip on that. Yeah, that, that brings me to when I was writing these blurbs, you know, imagine you're writing a blurb saying represented a company and defended them against allegations of fraud. <laughs> and unfair competition. So, you know, the very first thing that somebody sees is, oh, that ABC company, they were accused of fraud and unfair competition. 
So do you even really want to put that in writing about your client? Right. Yeah, that's fair. And I guess the other question to, that kind of goes with this question is, is asking someone for references even useful? Because I've had people where I've gone and I asked them for references, got glowing responses, hired them, and they were complete hucksters. Well, I mean, I guess I would look at it two ways in terms of from a personal standpoint, from a job perspective, what they versus a company standpoint, although in some instances it may be similar. I agree on the personal front. It's gotten to the point where you know we hire a lot of people and I've yet to have one of their references say, oh, my, this is a bad person. You know, why are you considering them? So it's, it's kind of got to be useless in that case. I think relative to a company, and, you know, if I use an ad agency as an example, I mean, they're always stating who their clients are. I mean, they do that as a matter of course so that people understand that. And I think that's where I was going that, again, I, I, I do not disagree that from a personal standpoint and making sure people are, are you know, are, are understood how they may be used. And if they say no, never use. And if it's a feeling on your part to say never use them all, I totally understand that. I guess the question is, if you, if I went to an advertising agency and they showed me a list of 10 clients, is that, is that, per, I'm asking, is that permission for me to go check on one of their clients and say, well, what do you think of this agency? Yeah. Uh, from a legal standpoint, I would, I would say probably, yes, you, you'd be well within your rights to check that out. Yeah, if it's listed, I would say, yeah, that, that they can't tell you, you can't call people that, that they have listed on their website. Um, but I just, I don't know if, if getting references is useful. I, you know, if you were to ask one of my clients, what's it like to work with Robin? They could tell you a whole bunch of words, but it wouldn't actually tell you anything, um, which is part of why I always talk to people first. Like I have a coaching conversation before, they, before I work with them because a reference doesn't tell them anything. Well, I think that that's twofold. Most of my clientele, 90% of my clientele is already referred in mm -hmm. by somebody who has already been a client. So mm -hmm. that kind of covers that. Those who aren't, they do feel comfort in looking at the list of people that are saying nice things mm -hmm. or positive things, but we're not going to have a relationship until we have a nice hour long conversation. And during that time, I think twice somebody has asked me, well, what about people who don't like you working with you? I mean, you're never going to hear anything on a reference list, but good stuff. And, and I was real clear. There are people that I won't work with and we did not work well together. And you and I could be those people and that's why we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That becomes part of what are they looking for and what are our metrics for success? And it all happens in deciding whether we work together. So from the privacy point of my client, I'm 100% behind no matter what. I just don't talk about them unless they say I can. And from the value, I don't know that there's a lot of value in it. Oh, and yeah. actually helped me get funding. Having actually the list of references helped me get funding once. <clears throat> value in that. Yeah. I know for me, I'm, I'm, I'm really clear that my clients have complete confidentiality. Um, and even if I put quotes on my website, I often will only use first names or I may not use names at all just to give. And I know like for me, it would be way better if I had a video with someone's name and their business. Like I hear that from marketing people and I'm just like, that's not, no, that's not cool for me. And I hear that from marketing people all the time and I have those things and I don't think that it's made a tangible difference mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Well, I guess representing the marketing people, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, that's why I kind of divide it out because I certainly can appreciate from a coaching standpoint, from a more personal uh, involvement aspect where it, it, trust is really, really important. And so that part, I understand, I, mm -hmm. I would say that, and that's why I kind of use the advertising agency as, as purely an example, because for them, it is about clients. I mean, who they have as clients is, would be considered important to them. And, and, you know, it was interesting as I looked at your question, you know, Robin, it was like, well, so if, if somebody lists at some place, if it's sitting on their website, have they received de facto permission for somebody to go call them? You know, is that already assumed or are they just saying, well, hey, you know, you know, it, it, Brian's point, you know, ABC is my company. Okay. Does that mean they can go call them about me and Bill? I mean, it's, it, it is an interesting area in terms of what it means. So I, I think there is a distinction as to how do you want to use it? And I think the trust aspect for what you're doing, critically important in some areas where I can't, you know, we're not, I'm not divulging that information. Yeah. Well, that's a great place for us to end it. And that is our 10 minutes. So thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It has been very enlightening and I look forward to the next one.
Thank you.